On June 5th, the home of David Hogg was swatted. Hogg is a gun law activist, and swatting is when you call in a false police report so that SWAT teams will storm someone's house. Many people have likened this to attempted murder, because someone has actually been killed when a SWAT team approached a man's house thinking they were facing a hostage situation. Many people have said this was political. They're accusing right-wingers of staging this attack against the Hogg family. Fortunately, the Hogs were not home at the time. Many others are accusing David Hogg of swatting himself in order to generate press or PR, and all of these theories are jumping the gun and rather absurd if you ask me. The other day I was contacted by someone claiming to be the swatter. They said that they were the one who filed the false police report and that their motivations were not political. They provided me with a recording, which I will play for you, but I'm redacting some of the information to protect the privacy of many of those involved. But upon hearing the information provided, upon hearing the recording, I genuinely believe this person is telling the truth. Keep in mind, there's always the possibility that this is a hoax on me. It's almost impossible to confirm that this person is the person who committed this swatting. But based on the recording that I was provided, I, I, I do believe that this is the case. Before I play the recording and before I play the interview, I want to talk about publishing the story and some ethics in journalism. I've gone back and forth with many people about whether or not I should use this interview and whether or not I should publish the social media handles of those who claim to have perpetrated this SWAT. Many people are saying they're just seeking attention and this is exactly what they want. However, many people are trying to use this for political points. So I'm faced with a conundrum of, yes, these people did want attention, they did want to see this coverage, and they do want everyone to know what their social media handles are. But by allowing them to speak out, we can learn what their motivations are. Not only that, this isn't an instance of people who have been caught by the police. This is an instance of people who are currently at large, who are active on Twitter and talking about the things they do. In which case, it's very difficult for me to decide whether or not people should be allowed to know who these people are. Some people have said to me that in the instance of you know mass shootings, we don't reveal the name of the shooter because that's what they're trying to accomplish. They're trying to get attention. However, that's in the instance where the person has been caught. When someone has committed a crime and not been caught, then typically news organizations publish their full details so people know who they are and what they're doing. In this instance, I think there are a few reasons why it's extremely important you guys hear the recording, hear the interview, and see the social media handles for these people, and it's that they're active. And I do believe that they will continue to do things like this, and I believe it also disproves the political narrative, which is extremely important in these extremely divisive times. So I'm going to play the recording provided for me, but I've redacted a lot of information because I want to protect people's privacy and security, but I want to provide enough to you so that you know I did receive a recording, I do believe it's genuine, and I'm also going to play an interview. Okay, Otherwise, can you look out the window and see if you see any officers? I'm not going to look Does outside. Have officers? I'm not going to look outside the window. I don't want to get I don't want to get shot. Did you hear any sirens outside? Perhaps. But I mean, if I see any marked vehicles, I'm going to uh, detonate the pipe bombs on their ankles and flee the scene. Okay. So, uh, so please. You said that you stabbed one person in the neck and he's possibly dead? Yes. Okay, and your name is Tariq? Yes. What's your phone number? <laughs> 954240 Just stay on the line with me, okay? Alright. And you stabbed all three? No, I just stabbed one in the neck. Because the parents were not complying with me. And now they're, the parents are unconscious and uh, they have pipe bombs on their ankles. Okay. Stay on the line with me, okay? Alright. Now, the person that you stabbed in the neck, is he, is he conscious? I don't believe so. Okay. And you said he, he is possibly dead? I believe so, yes. Okay. Do you have any weapons on you right now? Yes, I have an AR-15. I brought it with a, uh, I brought it what? in a duffel bag, um, when I was traveling to the house. Okay, what type of weapon do you have? 
You said it's an AK or? No, an, an AR-15. An AR? Yes. Where is it right now? It's right beside me. Now the parents, you said both of his parents are unconscious. Did you hurt them or what happened? All right, uh, hey, hi, um, and this is uh, in reference to where? Seven. In what city? Parkland. In Parkland. Yes, I was speaking to somebody before about this the whole situation. Parkland? Okay, hold on, let me transfer you over to Parkland, okay? I appre I well, I have a caller on the phone, I'm transferring him. All right. Well, I don't think this is a man. Stay on the phone with me. Okay, and can you tell me what's Our going on there? Regional communication. May I help you? Hey, I have a caller um, reference to the um, the seven uh, in Parkland call uh, possible stabbing. So. I got sent some audio recordings that, to me, altogether, it, it sounds legit like you guys, you know, you guys swatted, or at least one of you swatted the house of David Hogg. I guess everybody wants to know why you did it. Chaos is oh. entertainment. Well, uh, to be honest, personally, I mean, it was all just a joke uh, to begin with. Uh, one of my friends messaged me, and he was like, uh, I have an address to this person. Um, you think you want to do anything to it? And I was like, sure. I made the call, and then maybe, like, 20 minutes after I made the call, I see it all over news and everywhere, uh, like all over my Twitter and shit, but it was all just a joke. People say it was an attempted murder. Um, that's not the case. It was just a fucking, like, uh, a joke. Just a I mean, actually, joke. in in my video, I did liken it to attempted murder simply because, you know, you're sending in an armed SWAT team into someone's house, and, and they're expecting armed resistance, and we did see one guy die in December because the cops didn't know. They panicked and shot him. Yeah, uh... I mean, that was because, I mean, I, I, what I heard, he reached below his waist, um, when he was supposed to have his hands up, I suppose, uh, I mean. Not being uh, a minority helps, though. Yeah, he was like, I don't know, he was like, not white descent. That was probably one of the reasons, like, cops are sugar happy against people that are, uh, not white, if you haven't noticed. So, uh, someone, I think someone said you guys aren't pro-gun, is that, is that true? Yeah. That's definitely true. You know, we don't give a shit. None of us own guns. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds yeah, we're like... Just, we're just uh, teenagers online having fun, to be honest, man. I love seeing what I do on the news. Are you guys worried at all that, I mean, you're, you're taking resources away from the police, that you might actually get someone hurt doing this? Not really. I mean... <clears throat> Swatting's been a thing for about like maybe maybe twenty years. Uh, I I've, I've heard, and uh, there's only be one case of somebody getting killed from swatting. I mean, I'm not really worried. Uh, like, no, he like means one. he means you're using resources that could like, be used yeah, elsewhere. Resources. Like they could be preventing a school shooting while they're busy at fucking somebody's house. Oh yeah. No, I guess simply, are you are you worried at all about any negative consequences for swatting somebody? As far as us facing consequences, or... Well, first, other innocent people. You mean people, innocence. But, but then we'll get to that too, yeah. Yeah, in case you haven't noticed, the young man with the F here, he's kind of a psychopath. He doesn't care about other people too much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, I, I guess that answers that. Yeah, no, yeah, no, he couldn't care less what happens. I honestly don't care, I'm... I mean, personally, I don't swap people. Things happen every day in life. I mean, like, one out of a million, no one's going to die. No, but other people could die because the police are all at one person's house. Yeah, but, like, it's only happened once. No, he's not talking about the police accidentally killing people. He's talking about them not being able to save someone. Oh, yeah, that's You're using so police slow. resources. That's using police resources. <laughs> Holy fuck me. So then... Are you worried about you guys, not necessarily you guys, but, you know, whoever did the swatting, specifically getting caught, you're going to get raided or something like that? No, I'm not worried at all. They will never <clears throat> find him. Yeah. Well, uh, if I do ever get caught, it's like, 
I I mean to be honest, I don't think the like the charges for swatting are like really serious. I would like honestly wouldn't really care if I got caught if it were to happen. He's also fat, so there's that. <laughs> you guys, uh, you or I, should, I, should, I keep saying you guys, but you didn't swat David Hogg because you're a pro gun person or anything like that, or that it wasn't. You're saying it wasn't political. It was just a big funny joke. No, yeah, no, no political motivation at all. Just a joke, a hundred percent a joke. I just love, uh, love seeing how much like attention stuff can get, and this is probably the the most attention uh, something I've done has gotten. So, what makes you so confident that they'll they'll never find out who you are? Even if they Nothing. do, what's the worst that'll happen to them? Yeah, we didn't yeah, do anything did... illegal. I mean, allegedly, you know, he did something, but he's like, what? How old are you? Fourteen. Around that. I mean, realistically, I, I, what do you think is going to happen to a minor? Especially for swatting. You, like, the charges for swatting are, like, not, like, serious. Calling a all. false re police report. Yeah, that's, that's, that's about it. like, swatting is not even a legal term. It's like just, like, filing a false police report. No, swatting is actually pretty illegal. You're, you're wrong about that. So when I head over to Local 10 News, we can see that they've confirmed a call came into Coral Springs Police Department claiming a hostage situation at the home. And I believe that I can confirm this to be true. The recording provided to me, I was told, was to the Coral Springs Police Department. Vox, however, said, Someone called the sheriff's office claiming there was a hostage situation at the Hogg family home. This is not true. Local reporting rejects this notion that someone called the sheriff's. It was a call to Coral Springs. I know it might be a minor detail, but I think it's important when you are looking at these big stories, getting the details straight. A reporter for NBC News, Ben Collins, tweeted, Wonder how much and where people are building up so much resentment towards one teenager that they try to terrorize or kill him by swatting his home. Media Matters story says, following months of right-wing media attacks, family of Parkland shooting survivor David Hogg is targeted in dangerous harassment incident. A fake hostage call resulted in a team of armed police being sent to Parkland shooting survivor David Hogg's house. Everyone is so eager to jump on the political motivation without any facts or proof. No one knows who did this or why. So why is it that so many people, including an NBC reporter, are going to just put out there that this is clearly coming from gun rights activists who don't like David Hogg, or who are going to insinuate that right-wing media attacks led to this incident? And on the other side of the political aisle, we see something's up. David Hogg's reaction to swatting incident is raising a lot of eyebrows. As Twitchy told you earlier this morning, David Hogg's home was swatted. Fortunately, Hogg was in DC with his mother because this could have ended very, very badly. Swatting is no joke. So why is David Hogg treating it like one? And Twitchy doesn't go so far as to imply that David Hogg swatted himself, but it's strange that they're doubting his reaction or raising eyebrows in the first place. But I can easily pull up several tweets where people make that claim. Is it true you swatted your own house while you were out of town just to be back in the spotlight. In this Twitter thread, someone says, and yet he's apparently dangerous for someone to try and get him killed, says a whole lot about those poor, whittle, maligned gun owners. And someone responded, this just in, dickhead that swatted David Hogg declared representative of every gun owner ever, more in 11. This obviously being facetious. Another person tweeted, in my opinion, I believe that David Hogg swatted himself to try and stay relevant. These are just random Twitter users I pulled up when I searched David Hogg swatted. I don't think they're particularly influential. I'm just trying to show you how easy it is to pull up tweets of people claiming that Hogg swatted himself, and there are many others claiming that this was obviously right-wingers who didn't like Hogg's gun law activism and were targeting him. So listen to the interview, listen to the recording, and then you can decide whether or not you believe this to be true. Again, I, I, I do think so, but you don't have to trust me or take my word for it, and you can absolutely believe this is not the case. So hopefully following this, there will be some more reporting coming out that can help verify some of these facts or actually disprove them. But for the time being, this is the best we have, and this is the best I can do. So apologies if the confirmation isn't hard enough, isn't good enough for all of you, but I felt that due to the political divisiveness, it would be better to publish this then ignore it. So let me know what you think in the comments below and we will keep the conversation going. Stay tuned for new videos every day at 4 p.m. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.